gonna look worse if we stay out here. Come on. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it. Oh my god! Oh shit!
Let's pick them up. right up to my face. Right here, right in front of my nose, and he could have shot me. He almost shot me, the prick. I mean, you go out with a guy for however long and you think you know him, but man, this one really takes the cake. I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. How did you end up in the mines? I was... Carried and um, taken and... What did you see? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I thought we were close. After his sister's disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. You bringing in Meat Brain next? Gonna kick him around a bit for me? I'm sorry? Meat Brain, Mr. Muscle Brawn, Matt the Incredible Sulk. Is there something we need to know? Oh, no, nothing important except, um, you know, how he basically left me to die up on a freaking tumbling tower like a world-class douche nozzle. Mike. What do you remember? He came for me. He did. Came for you? Where is he? Did he make it? It was my fault Mike died. I wasn't supposed to move. But I did. And he saved me. So it's my fault that he died. You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there, and I'd give anything to unsee it.
Say what I came to say. I'm here to tell you what you're up against being back on this mountain. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with Hannah and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? I don't take kindly to you kids coming up here to my mountain. Your mountain. The mountain don't belong to me, it's true. But it don't belong to the Washingtons. This mountain belongs to the Wendigo. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer at Supermassive Games. Understanding the ancient myths of the Wendigo was key for their development that helped the visual look. Through sketches and concepts, these elements were visualized, such as eyes being milky, almost dead, with loss of lips and eyelids due to frostbite, fangs growing and arms and legs getting longer, with skin hardening and thickening to look snarling and menacing, yet withered and lean. What the hell was that? Another fingers and toenails extending like claws, allowing them to climb effortlessly. We made them look gaunt and weathered, and having ragged remains of clothes they wore, blood-stained and rotten, with patches of hair still remaining. They retained strong skeletal limbs, which enabled them to be agile and quick through the environment. Where are you? My name is Jamie Gallopo, animation director at Supermassive. The overall direction on the creature was to be very strong, to be extremely fast. We wanted a spider-like movement to the creature. One minute scampering, to leaping and then crawling. Almost instantaneous. And finally we wanted the creature to have this real uncontrollable thirst for flesh. From a sound design perspective, the Wendigo is a real challenge. For the main vocalizations of the Wendigo, we used our own vocalizations, various different animals from the exotic to the farmyard, various uh, plugins and processes to gel these sounds together and keep a human resonance behind that voice, telling the backstory of the Wendigo. Knock. During the chase sequences, the anger of the Wendigo is felt by encircling breaths, screams and screeches um, that uh, essentially chase you as you're being chased by the Wendigo. <laughs> Uh, layer them up in a multitude of layers, sometimes 15, 20 sounds playing at the same time, to build up the vocalizations for this fearsome creature which is always in attack mode, hyperactive and chasing you throughout the game. 